cheeks are very blushy today. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am here today to do a book haul for you guys. These are all the books I have received since my last book haul obviously. Mainly they are all from publishers with the exception of a few that I did purchase myself. But what I'm going to start off with is something that's very, 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 very exciting to me. One moment. And that is these. <laughs> Bloomsbury reached out to me and asked me if I would like to receive uh, my house copies of the Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, because very excitingly the house copies of Chamber of Secrets are coming out today, which is July 2nd. Hopefully this video gets up on July 2nd because you guys, you know how slow I am. But the house versions for the first book, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, came out last year. So I believe, I'm just assuming that they're going to be doing this every year uh, with the next book in the series. So of course they asked me what house I was in and obviously I'm a Hufflepuff and I'm not ashamed of it. So they did send me the soft cover and the hard cover. The hard cover is so cool. It has the, um, it looks like the house scarf and the soft cover has yellow pages as well. So they sent me both of these. I am beyond excited to have received these. So thank you so much to Bloomsbury. Definitely go out and get yourselves a copy of your house. Let me know down below in the comments what house you are. I would love to know where my Hufflepuff's at. But these are just such a cool collector's item. So I am, I'm just really excited that I got these and I think that you should have them too. So there's that. Moving on to the rest of the books, the next one that I received is Resistance by Jennifer A. Nielsen. So Jennifer A. Nielsen is the author who wrote the False Prince trilogy, which Jeff and I read and absolutely loved. So this one's coming out on August 28th, and essentially it is a historical fiction YA about this young girl here, and it's set in Nazi Germany pretty intense. So it does follow this girl Shira and her little sister is taken away to a death camp and then her little brother disappears so her parents are like don't even know what to do with themselves obviously. So because Shira has very fair features she's actually able to become a courier and as she's a courier she's like out searching through Poland and different places for her brother. And I'm assuming from there many things ensue, adventures, heartbreak, sadness, and it's about like the Nazi resistance, um, sorry the Jewish resistance against the Nazis so it sounds pretty intense for a YA but I am really really excited to read this one so and this one was sent to me from Scholastic Press. Next one I have here is The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. Uh, this was sent to me for a review from Random House so Penguin so thank you so much to Penguin for sending me this. This is kind of like a retelling of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein but let me read a bit more detail here. Elizabeth Lavenza hasn't had a proper meal in weeks. Her thin arms are covered with bruises from her caregiver, and she is on the verge of being thrown into the streets until she is brought to the home of Victor Frankenstein, an unsmiling, solitary boy who has everything except a friend. Victor is her escape from misery. Elizabeth does everything she can to make herself indispensable, and it works. She is taken by the Frankenstein family and rewarded with a warm bed, delicious food, and dresses in the finest silk. Soon she and Victor are inseparable, but her new life comes at a price. As the years pass, Elizabeth's survival depends on managing Victor's dangerous temper and indulging his every whim, no matter how depraved. Behind her blue eyes and sweet smile lies the calculating heart of a girl determined to stay alive, whatever the cost, as the world she know it is in, knows it is consumed by darkness. This to me sounds like a book that's going to be really, really good to read during the fall, coming close on to Halloween, for everyone made to feel like a side character in their own story. Anyway, so that's this one. It comes out um, in September of 2018, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. Next is another one sent to me from Penguin, and that is All We Ever Wanted by Emily Giffen. I am actually currently reading this book right now, and I am really enjoying it. This is an adult, uh, contemporary or adult yeah, contemporary, I guess, novel. And it's following two different storylines that are, of course, intertwined, but two different perspectives, I should say. So the first one is from Nina, who is the mother of a young boy named Finch who has done something horribly wrong. And the other story is told by Thomas, who is the father of Lila, and she has gotten herself into a little bit of trouble. The both of the kids go to the same school, and the story is kind of following what's happened between these two or what's happened that these kids have done wrong. I don't really want to say too much because I don't want to give anything away, but it is a bit of more of a darker story. I have read some of 
Emily Giffen's other books like Something Borrowed which was you know a bit more light and, and fun. This one not so fun but it is really good. I'm really enjoying it so I'll let you guys know what I think of this soon. The next book is That's Not What Happened by Cody Keplinger. This book was sent to me for review from Scholastic Press and it also comes out on August 28th, 2018. Cody Keplinger is the lady who wrote The Deaf, which I absolutely loved, and I don't think she's put out a book in quite some time. So let's see what this one is about. It's been three years since the Virgil County High School massacre, three years since my best friend Sarah was killed in a bathroom stall during the mass shooting. Everyone knows Sarah's story that she died proclaiming her faith, but it's not true. I know because I was with her when she died. I didn't say anything then, and people got hurt because of it. Now Sarah's parents are publishing a book about her, so this might be my last chance to set the record straight. But I'm not the only survivor with a story to tell about what did and didn't happen that day. Except Sarah's matredom is important to a lot of people, people who don't take kindly to what I'm trying to do. And the more I learn, the less certain I am about what's right. I don't know what will be worse, the guilt of staying silent or the consequences of speaking up. Ooh boy. This also sounds like it's going to be sad, sad book. Why so many sad books? Why? So it's it's not a very big book at all. YA contemporary, um, well it's about 325 pages. But yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this. I'll need to be in a mood to read a sad book before I pick this one up, but looks good. Next one, also from Scholastic Press, that I'm so incredibly excited for. It is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. This one also comes out on August 28th, 2018. Victoria Schwab, or is she going back? No, it's Victoria Schwab for this one. I never know. V.E. Schwab, Victoria Schwab, Victoria Schwab. I am very, very excited to have this book. I still have yet to read a book by Victoria Schwab because I'm like constantly late to every bandwagon, so... Maybe this will be my first one. Let's see what it's about. Cassidy Blake's life is full of ghosts. Ooh. Ever since Cass almost drowned, okay, she did drown, but she doesn't like to think about it. She can pull back the veil that separates the living from the dead and enter the world of spirits. Her best friend is even a ghost. So things are already pretty strange, but they're about to get much stranger. When Cass's parents land a gig hosting a TV show about the world's most haunted places, the family heads off to Edinburgh, Scotland, where graveyards, secret passageways, and ancient castles teem with restless phantoms. And when Cass meets a girl who shares her gift, she realizes how much she has to learn about the veil and herself. And she'll have to learn fast. The city of ghosts is more dangerous than she ever imagined. Sounds spooky. I am 100% going to be reading this most likely closer to, I'll probably read it closer to August actually, so that I'm reading it in preparation for Halloween. But another one that's not a super big book, let's see. It's only 285 pages, so it should be a quick read. I am excited because I've heard nothing but great things about Victoria Schwab, so. Yeah. Next, I have a few books that I purchased myself, so I will go through those ones now. First up, I have Strange and Ever After by Susan Dennard. This is book three in the, what's it called? Something Strange and Deadly trilogy, I believe. So I do already own book one and book two, and this was on Book Olet for two bucks, so I bought it to complete the set. Haven't started reading this, don't know what it's about. I don't know when I'll get to it, but I thought two bucks, complete the set, why not? That's part of using Book Outlet, I suppose. This one also follows in that same realm. It's Sweet Temptation by Wendy Higgins. I own book one and book two. This is book four, still missing book three, but it was $2, so I figured I would get it to add to the series. I've heard really good things about both this series and the other, what was that called again? And the Something Strange and Deadly series. So I think that they're kind of like, quick YA paranormal type of books. Every now and then I get in the mood for this kind of a story, so it's good to have them around when you need them. Next I got Love and Gelato, and this is by Jenna Evans Welch. I have heard really good things. It's supposed to be a very cute YA contemporary, to be honest. Don't really know much about it. Gelato. Mm -hmm. Just quickly go over the back because I'm not good at summarizing things. Lena is spending the summer in Tuscany, but she isn't in the mood for Italy's famous sunshine and fairy tale landscape. She's only there because it was her mother's dying wish that she get to know her father. But what kind of father isn't around for 16 years? 
All Lena wants to do is go back home. But then she is given a journal that her mom had kept when she lived in Italy. Suddenly, Lena's uncovering of a magic world of secret romances, art, and hidden bakeries, a world that inspires her along with the ever so charming Wren to follow in her mother's footsteps and unearth the secret that has been kept for far too long. It's a secret that will change everything Lena knew about her mother, her father, and even herself. People come to Italy for love and gelato, someone tells her, but sometimes they discover much more. So I have heard that this is a cute contemporary, but also um, a bit more deep diving than a regular contemporary, so I'm assuming that there's something a bit more to this story. It's actually quite a large contemporary. Maybe not, just big print. I can never tell with these books because sometimes they're like thick and 300 pages, sometimes they're skinny and like 500 pages. I, I can't keep up. Next up I got Tower of Dawn by Sarah J Mass, which is book, I want to say six. Hold the phone. One, two, three, four, five, six. Book six. I think that this, I don't know if this is officially book six or not. I'm not sure because I still haven't read Empire of Storms because I'm less slow. So anyways, I bought this because it was like five bucks and I needed it for my series. So. There's that. The last book I purchased is Rage Inducing because it came without the dust jacket. This is the second time that this has happened to me. Empire of Storms was the first from ordering from Book Outlet. It's a risk that you take when you buy from the Scratch and Dent section when you pay like eight bucks for a book, but I am really disappointed that it didn't come with a dust jacket. Anyways, we're moving past it. And that is Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo, which is a book two in the Six of Crows duology series? I don't know. I haven't read Six of Crows yet, you guys know that, but I figured when I do read it, I'll probably want the second book, and where it was such a deal, I got it. Too bad it was a disappointment, but I'm sure the book is still good, so that's fine. And last but not least, I have Hey Kiddo, and this is by Jarrett J. Krozoksa hard last name to pronounce. This one was also sent to me for review from Scholastic. This one comes out on October 9th, 2018, and I have already read this. This is a graphic novel memoir of Jarrett's life. So, as you can see, graphic novel, all pictures. Um, basically, this is, like I said, it's a memoir, so it's going through his life and his struggles. It is not an upbeat and fun graphic novel. It reminds me a lot of like a Draw Your Life, which I think is really, really cool, but it's really good. I'm not gonna go into too much detail. I'll talk more, of a, more about it in my wrap up. I did really enjoy it. Definitely recommend you check this out. It did kind of remind me a little bit of Mouse. You know how that was like a graphic novel that was kind of like a memoir about, about like the Holocaust. This obviously is not about the Holocaust, but same general idea, like graphic novel memoir. Anyways. You get the idea. All right, guys, so those are all of the books that I have acquired recently, um, both from publishers and from purchasing. Let me know down below if you have read any of those and what you thought of them, or if there are any that you are really excited for. I'd love to know. Um, but that's all I have for you guys today, so thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!